And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Well, we're kind of winding up basketball now with the NBA playoffs and moving into baseball. College basketball, of course, is now well finished. We had our March Madness a while back and then the NCAA Championships. And we determined who was the best team in the country, the best big school in the country, because remember, they play at all these different divisions, Division I, then Division II, then Division Three, and then smaller schools, or NAIA, and then you've got junior colleges. All of them, all of them, them trying to be number one, all of them trying to be the best, but only a precious few can do that. The hundreds of other schools that are playing, some of them have more modest goals. Maybe to win 20 games and go to the tournament. Others just want to break even, win as many as they lose. And for others, the goals are even more modest than that. Such is the case with a school and a team you've probably never heard of. The St. Louis College of Pharmacy, which is exactly what it sounds like. A private liberal arts school dedicated to training serious students to become pharmacists. They do have athletic teams, but they are not named the Hawks or the Tigers or the Bulldogs or what have you. They are the Eutectics, E-U-T-E-C-T-I-C-S, I believe, Eutectics. And if you go look that up in the dictionary, it means a mixture, specifically a scientific mixture, a chemical mixture, which makes sense, also shows you where their priorities lie, which certainly haven't been in the men's basketball program. Because when this last season started, back in November, the St. Louis, St. Louis College of Pharmacy Eutectics had lost 100 games in a row. They had not won a game in more than four years. A lot of the games, of course, were blowouts. They were just hopelessly beaten. Other games were closer. They lost some of those games by just one or two points. Some of those games went to overtime before they lost. And some they lost in incredible fashion, seemingly having the game won only to somehow lose it in the final seconds. Somehow, this team always managed to seem to be able to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. And don't you imagine how that made them feel? Their fans, their coaches, their players. Constantly staring at defeat. Crushed down. Depressed. Downtrodden absolutely no hope. I imagine that's the way the principal characters in our readings this morning must have felt as well. From Acts chapter 9, the well-known story of the conversion of Paul, then known as Saul. We know that as Saul, he was a Pharisee, and a very zealous Pharisee, a protector of the law and of the true Jewish religion. And he arrested Christians and harassed them. Anybody who confessed to following this Jesus, Saul was after. But now he comes to the road to Damascus in a personal encounter with Jesus Christ. And scales form on. And then, and then all of a sudden the scales drop off. And he can see not only physically, but spiritually. His eyes are opened. He sees Jesus for who he really is. And don't you imagine that filled Saul, now Paul, with all kinds of remorse, all kinds of guilt. He must have felt defeated and crushed and downtrodden after all the bad things he'd done. 
Our reading in John is a post-resurrection story of Jesus that finds him with the disciples. And the principal character here is Peter. We'll get to him in just a second, but one quick side note on this. Isn't it wonderful, the incredible detail that the Gospels have, that the Bible has? We're not just told about fish and nets. We're told about which side of the boat they fished on. And when they dragged the fish back, we're told how many? Exactly 153. It gives us comfort to know that. Because if you were going to go make up a story about Jesus and the disciples, you wouldn't have that kind of detail in it. It's a reminder to us that the Gospels and the Word come through people, but they come from God. So now back to Peter. Remember, it hasn't been that long since Peter denied Jesus. Peter said, I'll never deny you, Lord. I'll die before I do that. But we know that he did. Not once, not twice, but three times. And then the Bible tells us he went outside wept bitterly. And I imagine that's not even half of that, how bad Peter was feeling. Can you imagine what was going through his mind and his heart? He not only betrayed his Savior, but a person who he probably thought of as his best friend. He certainly felt depressed and defeated and downtrodden. But there's a reminder this morning from Peter and from Paul that God gives second chances. Not just second chances, but third chances and fourth chances and fifth and sixth. However many we need until we take our last breath. 1 Timothy 2.4 says that God wants that all men should come to know Him and the knowledge of the truth. And then in Peter, in his epistle, perhaps drawing on this experience, Peter writes that God is patient with men, not wanting anyone to perish. We often wonder why, when we look at our evil world and how rotten and terrible things are, why doesn't Jesus just come back and get it over with? God is patient, waiting for more people to turn to Him and to come to Him in repentance. And that includes us. We may look at our lives and the mess we've made of them, and the dumb things that we've done, and the sins that we've committed, and we just must feel just like Paul, and just like Peter, and just like the St. Louis College of Pharmacy basketball team beaten down, crushed, rolled over, hopeless, despair, depression, no way out. We get to that point in our lives. But thank goodness we have a God of second chances who comes to us and says, it doesn't matter. However many times you need, I am here. I will forgive. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've said. It doesn't matter what's gone on in your past. I can make it new in Jesus. That's what he did with Paul. This persecutor, this Pharisee, became the chosen instrument to go and reach the world, the known world, with the gospel of Jesus. And with Peter, who denied him three times, Jesus restored him three times in our reading this morning, saying, Peter, do you love me? And he said, yes, you know that I do. Lord. Three times Peter denied Jesus, three times Jesus restored Peter. And it was on Peter, and through Peter, and with Peter, that Jesus built the rock of his church. God gave second chances to Paul, he gave second chances to Peter, and he gives second chances to each one of us. 
just as in the story of the prodigal son. A second chance. God is like the Father, standing on the portico, waiting, watching for us to return. And when He sees us, He runs out to greet us and throws His arms around us. He says, welcome home. Depression and defeat and misery are replaced with joy and love and forgiveness and peace. And that's kind of what happened with the St. Louis College of Pharmacy basketball team. All those losses. They started this most recent season with six more. 106 losses in a row. Downtrodden, crushed, beaten, depressed. They never gave up. So on November 30th of this past year, they finally did it. They broke the losing streak. They beat Lindenwood College. And can't you imagine the happiness in that locker room? The among those coaches and players and fans. And then they went out the next week and won again. And when the season was over, their record stood at 7-22. Seven, and 22. seven wins and 22 losses. And a lot of people would look at that and say, that's an awful record. What a terrible year they had. Not them. They looked at it and they said, what a great year it was. We finally put behind us all that misery, all that defeat, all that depression, all that losing is behind us now. We didn't give up. We gave ourselves a chance. and We did it. Don't give up. Don't look at the misery in your life, the depression, the brokenness, and give up. Come back to the God who will forgive, who will restore. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter what you've said. Doesn't matter what's happened. 108 losses in a row. Doesn't matter. God is a God of second chances. And He is there waiting, arms open, to take you back. In the words of Paul from Philippians 3, the same Paul who got a second chance himself. Forgetting what lies behind, we press on to the goal in Christ Jesus. Amen.